CFB, today's CCMR topic is on understanding your SAT and TSIA scores. Why do you want a good score on your SAT or TSI? It's quite simple. We want to make sure you have a college readiness score so that way you're able to take college level classes right when you get to college. This will save you time and money in the future. More reasons on why you want to have a good score on the SAT or TSIA too? You can earn some scholarships and in fact, some jobs do require that you have college readiness scores. What's the difference between the SAT and TSIA 2 The SAT is one way colleges may compare the strengths of your academic sk skills to those of other applicants. It can be used for admission purposes as well as scholarships. SAT scores can demonstrate college readiness and it can actually exempt you from the TSI. The TSIA2 is mainly used in Texas and also some of the bordering states in Texas. It is used to compare your current skills to the skill levels needed to succeed in college level courses. TSIA2 scores determine whether you will begin college with taking extra courses to bring you up to college level or if you're able to start with college level courses right away. Let's look at the scores that you need on the SAT in order to be college ready. So the college readiness benchmark for evidence-based reading and writing is a 480 or higher, and on the math, it's a 530 or higher. When you're looking at your score report from your SAT, sort of think of it as a stoplight or a signal. If it's in the red area, we need to strengthen our skills. If it's in the yellow, we're approaching the college readiness benchmarks that we need. If it's in the green, then we've met our benchmark, but we can always go higher if that is what our aim is. When we're looking at it for the SAT national score ranges, the highest score a student can earn is a 1600. That breaks down to an 800 each in the evidence-based reading and writing as well as a math section. That is typically 8% of students would fall into that category. Competitive students, meaning in the top 30%, fall anywhere between the 1200 to the 1390 range. Above average students are looking at falling between the 1000 range to an 1190 range. Take a look at the ranges and the breakdown between evidence-based reading and writing and math. The TSI is on a different indicator. So for them, you need at least a 945 or higher on the evidence on the English standard and at least a 950 or higher on the math. The English also does require that you have an essay and you score at least a 5 or higher on that essay. In the event you don't get a 945 on the ELAR, you will be taken to a diagnostic. That's sort of like a second chance. You get at least a 5 on that, you're able to take the essay, you get a 5 on your essay, you still meet college readiness with English. With math, if you don't reach that 950, you'll be taken to the diagnostic as well. You need at least a six or higher on the diagnostic in order to show college readiness scores. The great thing is with many of the colleges, we can mix and match. If you meet the standard in English with your SAT and you need the TSI for the math, they'll accept it as long as we have a mix and match of college readiness scores. Just be sure that you submit that information to the colleges. How do we access and send our score reports? Let's talk about that next. So when it comes to sending our SAT scores, that is something you will need to do directly. In order to access your scores, you need to log into your College Board account, click on My SAT, scroll down until you see where it says All PSAT and SAT scores, and click the link to see the actual detailed report and the subscores that are located for that test. You'll also need to send your scores for the SAT to those universities that you're interested in. You would log into your College Board account, you'd click on My SAT, you need to click on the link in order to send your scores. The cost is typically $12 to $15 for you to submit your scores, but if you need to send it expedited, then there is an additional fee that is required. If you do qualify for free or reduced lunch, you do not have to pay. You would actually be able to waive that and you'll be able to submit your scores free of charge. As for your scores with the TSIA2, if you go to studentportal.accuplacer.org, you can enter your information in and you can then access your scores. The other thing you can do is you can Google student AccuPlacer results and you can then put in the information so that way you can find the scores and have those sent to you and also to the university that you need to send it to. What's next? What do we gotta do to make sure that you have those college readiness scores? If we're looking at the SAT, as always, make sure you're looking at Khan Academy to get free SAT prep. It is free, they prepare you, you can take some tests online, so it is a great opportunity that's available. 
For the TSIA2, we do have Imagine Math with our CFB district that you can look at, and your ELA skills are actually being strengthened through your English classes. There are also some PDFs that are available for TSI for your English and math that you can also take a look at in order to prepare you even further for the TSI. Frequently asked questions that we have, what if I have a disability? There are test accommodations that are available as long as those are documented. When it comes to the SAT, those have to be submitted. So please speak with your campus if that is something that you would have needed. For any other questions, please feel free to reach out to your CCMR Dean or to your counselor. Until next time, have a good one.